welcome. Thank, Thank you. So you. By the way, I've heard that you would only attend this conference if you could take a picture with Cristiano Ronaldo, right? Yeah. We don't want to get disappointed <laughs> in case you don't get the chance to go there. Oh, wow. This is so sweet of you. <laughs> so we accomplished your, your desire. It's him with Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> Oh, wow. Hi, Madira. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm glad Mauricio and Yakuba team have uh, put up this wonderful event together. Uh, in fact, I met, met Mauricio somewhere around June along with Rahul and others in Dubai. And uh, when he invited me, I said, what Madira, where is it? I honestly didn't know where it existed. And since then, I've only been reading about this place so much that I've got my family also flying in and said, you know, they want to tag along with me. Uh, and I'm loving this. Such a pretty place, such beautiful people, such great hospitality. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, my name is Ajay. I, uh, you know, my first blockchain journey started way back, 2015. I created my first Bitcoin wallet eight years back uh, to explore something for a virtual reality decent distributed rendering system. Unfortunately, didn't trade enough in Bitcoin back then. Uh, but then went deep into augmented and virtual reality space, built a VR company, raised funding, sold it to Flipkart, which is owned by Walmart in India, uh, led Flipkart labs for a couple of years, seeded a lot of innovations around augmented reality, 3D, uh, Web3, uh, generative AI space. Uh, and I've been actively involved in the Web3 space for the last three years now. I missed out on the first wave of blockchain in 2015, but I've been passively following you know, the whole Bitcoin, Ethereum ecosystem since then. I've been investing and advising a lot of startups, back the startup studio, which got acquired by Polygon Labs, I think a couple of years ago. So I've been associated with Polygon Labs for a couple of years, worked as advisor for whole of last year, and joined them uh, early this year as uh, full-time to lead the developer studio. I am a senior vice president, and I lead the entire developer community, developer evangelism for Polygon Labs. Uh, so that's a quick one about me. Uh, so to get started, why do we need blockchain? I know it's a very stupid question to ask in a blockchain conference, uh, but for starters, what is what is blockchain? Uh, because I don't know the audience profile here, so I thought I'll, I'll keep it as layman as possible, but I'll go into deep technical aspect as well. I'm giving you an early warning sign here. So if you feel something is you know not, not something that you're able to follow, do go take that time to write down, remember it, Google about it and read more about it, because that's what got me into blockchain. It's the technology. Yes, there is the aspirational tech, uh, financial aspect to it, the temptation to you know make money and all of that, but for me, it's personally technology that's interesting and I've gone deep into the tech and I'd love to share a bit about it today as well. So what is blockchain? I think uh, in, in simple layman terms, uh, you have a traditional database systems where all your data, it could be your transactions, it could be your personal data, all of it is stored in a centralized server owned by a trusted third party. Right? Either an institution or an individual or group of company or entity would own the data. So you're trusting everybody with that data. Uh, naturally, we have seen the disasters of that for a lot of time now where the data gets you know, leaked or you, it gets abused and you know, the transactions are not safe. And it's not just in, in financial sector, even in games, which actually led to the formation of Ethereum where you have your digital assets and one day you wake up and go to your game and the asset is missing. Now, what can you do? You don't have control over your assets. You trust somebody to do it. Blockchains, in contrast, as, as she said, I think Satoshi Nakamoto, which represents an anonymous group of individual or, or entity, uh, invented blockchain and gave this world a very beautiful technology which enables complete, trustless, decentralized way to store data. So instead of storing data in one server, you actually store it in multiple places, which means no one person or one entity can corrupt the data or steal the data. It's, it's all available on a decentralized ledger. So that's in simple terms what blockchain is. Uh, and yes, you know, it enables a lot of benefits, like it it's enables faster and cheaper transactions. You can execute things parallelly. It's highly secure. And of course, you own the custody of the data and it's, it's completely, you know, you trust yourself and nobody else. You trust the code rather. Now, with this being blockchain, you know, Web3 is a very, very large universe of, of consisting of various blockchain ecosystems. And if you are building a project in, in Web3, you need a home to be able to deploy that project. And uh, yeah, I think time has answered that Ethereum is probably the best bet compared to miles, miles ahead compared to any other ecosystem today. Ethereum founded by uh, uh, Vitalik Buterin and multiple other co-founders with him. Way back in 2014, you know, 15 is when Ethereum came to life. It has stood the test of time. 
it's been almost close to a decade since the first white paper came out and it is it is it is able to prove that it is probably one of the most efficient and widely adopted blockchain ecosystem in the world today you take the transactions that 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 it processes more than a million transactions processed in a day speaks volume of of of, of how many people are deploying on ethereum and also one of the safest kind of proof of stake chain with more than 50 billion dollars staked as of as of now in in ethereum uh, so you compare it with typically any other alt uh, layer one change that exist ethereum stands out completely you know talk about ecosystem ethereum has the most widest developer ecosystem in the world decentralized this is probably one of the most highly decentralized blockchain after bitcoin of course but with bitcoin you can't do anything beyond just trading and ethereum enables you to you know deploy your projects you through smart contracts uh, security highly secure except for the small DAO hack that happened back in 2017 or 18 i think uh, ethereum has stood the test of time in terms of security as well and probably one of the most most secure network that you can see the only you know challenging aspect with ethereum has been the scalability which i'll come to it in the next set so a clear winner you talk about any project uh, nft projects exchanges DeFi projects gaming projects uh, infrastructure projects tokenization it has it has got all of it and a lot of them have deployed in ethereum now naturally when you know you get so much of love uh, ethereum is probably not able to handle this much amount of love uh, i think the on, only only uh, place which can accommodate so much of love is madira but ethereum is not madira you can you cannot soak in so much of love so ethereum is struggling to cope up with the enormous amount of usage that it is getting i don't think the founders envisage that so much of usage will start happening so we call this the blockchain trilemma, right? Scalability, decentralization, security. Now what does the blockchain trilemma mean? Is you try to solve one or two aspects of it, the third aspect goes for a toss. Which means if you try to solve for security and decentralization, scalability takes a compromise, which is the case with Ethereum. It is highly decentralized, highly secure, but not as scalable as possible. Now what do I mean by it's not scalable? Right? So the number of transactions that you can process in the Ethereum blockchain is limited. The transaction fees jump a lot as more and more transactions happen. For example, I am transferring one euro to Mauricio in a, in a peak time, you know, it's like traffic signal, right? Like you have more cars, you have lesser time, you know, more time it takes for you to cross a road. So similarly in Ethereum, more number of transactions, sometimes for me to transfer one euro to somebody, it might cost me two euros as transaction fees, which absolutely doesn't make sense. So this is why Ethereum doesn't scale enough, but that's what Ethereum is. They don't want to compromise on the decentralized decentralization of security and scalability goes for a toss. So this is typically what a limitation of any layer one blockchain is, which in this case, Ethereum also is. Uh, very highly, highly uh, secure and decentralized, but not scalable, which means the transaction fees are extremely high. It may not suit a lot of real world use cases where there are a lot of transactions involved like gaming or you know uh, 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 or, or even nft transactions uh, configurable it's not highly configurable which means there is a specific token for the gas price and then you cannot change a lot of those as well compliance wise as well i think there is uh, a lack of control over validators and others so if governments want to deploy a private blockchain which actually suits the interest more or a bank or a financial institution wants to deploy a private blockchain not a public blockchain it's not possible in ethereum today because it's it's not built for that so that's where layer 2 protocols pitch in so layer 2 in a network architecture it's not new to uh, blockchain itself any layer 2 in a typical network architecture is you know is is, is built to scale a layer 1 uh, in, the, in this case ethereum is a layer 1 blockchain and layer 2 uh, have have been in the business for many years now to scale ethereum so yeah what what are layer 2 protocols so what layer twos do is imagine the same transaction. I'll have to transfer a euro to Mauricio. Instead of doing it on Ethereum blockchain, I do it on a separate system on a layer two blockchain. And then I just go and post the proof back on layer one. So that's what layer twos do, which means it inherit the security. It inherit the decentralization aspect of the layer one. But then you don't have to process every transaction on the layer one. You do all of it on layer two batch all of them and just put it back on layer one and then you save the gas price so that's how layer twos are typically built in a very layman language uh, where you execute the transactions outside layer one batch them and put it back to l1 so there are layer three side chains as well what a side chain does is it doesn't post the proof back it's a completely isolated system where you and you deploy all the 
uh, uh, transactions or layer threes which don't inherit the security from layer two. So there are alternates to it, but clearly layer two is probably the only way in which uh, layer ones can scale. And don't think of layer twos as a competition to Ethereum. It's a complementary. And this is acknowledged by the founder of uh, Ethereum, Vitalik itself, where he says the end game for Ethereum scaling is layer two. Because what Ethereum has successfully solved for is decentralization and security, and layer twos are solving for scalability, which means it's a perfect system now and there's no challenge to actually deploy applications on Ethereum plus layer two combined. Uh, there are typical ways of you know doing a layer two, we call them roll-ups. Why is it called a roll-up is because you batch multiple transactions into a rollup and then submit it back to Ethereum. So instead of doing 10 transactions on Ethereum or layer one, you do all of them on a separate layer two and then post it as one transaction to Ethereum. So naturally, the cost gets amortized across multiple chains and that's how you get the benefit of scalability. So there are two ways of doing rollups. One is called an optimistic rollup. The second is called a zero knowledge rollup. So what is an optimistic rollup? Like the name suggests, you're optimistic about the fact that any transaction that's submitted is genuine and not a fraud. Now it's arguable, right? I think debatable that it's not probably the most efficient way to do it. So what happens is you have a, a sequencer which batches all the transactions and then it posts the confirmation on Ethereum. Now the way it works is there are fraud proofs, which means you have seven days, typically it can, it can be configurable, but typically you have seven days to challenge the transaction and claim that that was a fraud. So by default, it's assumed, the system assumes that every transaction is genuine. And if you think there is a fraud, then you'll have to challenge it. What are the two main challenges here? Number one, if nobody challenges a fraud transaction in seven days, then actually a illicit transaction will end up going to the blockchain and you cannot reverse that. Number two, it takes seven days to withdraw the, the amount if you're done doing a transaction. So the finality is not instant. You, I transfer somebody something, and if they have to actually withdraw it, it takes around seven days because till then you cannot touch that because anybody can prove it's a fraud transaction. So this is how optimistic rollups work. A simpler, most efficient way to scale Ethereum, but probably uh, not, not the most secure way to do it. Then you have something called as zero knowledge rollups. So what do zero knowledge rollups do? is they don't assume that everything is, in fact, they assume that every transaction might be fraudulent and hence you post the proof back to Ethereum. So what zero knowledge rollups do is batch all the transactions like an optimistic rollup, but they prove that all of these transactions are genuine using mathematics and you know using cryptography called zero knowledge and then post the proof back to Ethereum, which means you are assured that any transaction is secure as soon as it's processed and the finality time is instant. You don't need to wait for seven days, five days. It takes instantly. Instantly, your transaction is processed and proved on Ethereum. So that's what zero knowledge rollups do. Uh, so yeah, I think, I think in, in, I don't know if a lot of you have heard, zero knowledge in, in, in basic terms is, uh, is it's, it's a cryptographic algorithm using which I can prove a, a, a mathematical statement to someone without revealing the data. Let's take, for example, the, the average age for entering the bar, I don't know what it is in Portugal, maybe it's 21 years. Let's take the average age for entering a bar in Portugal is 21 years. Now, how do you prove that you are 21 plus? The most simple way is you show your ID card, you would reveal your date of birth, and then they verify that, okay, you are about 21. That's not secure, right? You're sharing your entire data to do that. Zero knowledge as a technology, it's a cryptographic concept, which allows you to prove that you are about 21 years old without actually sharing your date of birth. You prove the statement is true without sharing the data of the statement. That's what zero knowledge is all about in very simpler terms. Now, zero knowledge has been applied to blockchain scaling in the most efficient manner. So all the mathematicians, cryptograph cryptographers, uh, cryptographers came together and said, hey, what if we apply this zero knowledge concept to scale Ethereum, which is you don't need to submit or, or execute all the transactions on Ethereum directly. You do it separately. You just use a zero knowledge proof to prove Ethereum that you know this transaction is valid. The similar to the, yeah, the bar example I gave you. So that way zero knowledge rollups are very complex because it's not simple mathematics. It's one of the most complex mathematics that the world has ever seen. It's, it's, it's continues to be innovated. There are a lot more things to be get efficient here, but uh, zero knowledge rollups are probably the most efficient way to scale Ethereum because it derives the security as well and it's most secure. So yeah, there is naturally, 
layer twos are all in rage because Ethereum is clear winner, 50 billion asset locked, and there is a clear problem of scalability. So naturally, everybody wants to solve for it. So layer twos are all you know upcoming in the last couple of years where everybody is trying to launch a layer two. The problem with this is everybody is launching their own isolated layer two blockchain, which means there's no interoperability between them. Today we talk about mobile systems, Android and iOS. Imagine if there were 10 operating systems, if an app developer had to deploy on 10 operating systems, if a mobile manufacturer had to support 10 operating systems, it doesn't make sense, right? For two itself, already we are a fragmented world between Android and iOS. Imagine a fractured mandate with blockchain today. There are multiple layer twos where they're all trying to scale Ethereum, but they're all not interoperable with each other, right? So whatever applications or assets are there on one chain, it is extremely hard to move it to another chain because naturally they're not interoperable. So that's one of the most biggest problems with layer twos today. The ecosystem is fragmented, the liquidity is fragmented, it's, it's, it's not scalable also because certain layer twos are not doing the right way of optimistic of ZK rollups, they're doing random ways of doing it. I'm just calling it out for general knowledge. So now, naturally, Polygon Labs has been one of the companies that has been trying to solve for it. So for probably for the next five to 10 minutes, I'll take you through the journey. I've been associated with Polygon Labs for just a year or two now, but the project started as a very small, humble beginning in 2018. I say this because a lot of startups may be here today are starting small. Polygon Labs was no, diff no different. It was a very small project. Started as a project in ETH India in 2018, almost five years back. And today it has grown to become a beast of, you know, one of the most widely adopted layer two protocols and actually trying to solve for layer two scaling in the most efficient manner as well. So probably today I'll take you through the journey of the three significant timelines of how Polygon has evolved from Polygon proof of stake chain to the zero knowledge pivot and investment that we did, which has tremendously paid off. And then Polygon 2.0, which is our vision for how blockchains can be scaled completely efficiently. So to start with Polygon proof of stake chain, uh, as I told you, very simple, Ethereum is not scalable. So proof of stake chain started as a side chain, basically for you to be able to execute all the transactions separately and then just you know, uh, support e EVM, which is Ethereum virtual machine. There was no ZK proofs or anything. Proof of stake is a simple way to scale Ethereum. And uh, yeah, it's, it's got a lot of popularity today. So this is one of the most widely adopted blockchains today. It's got more than a billion plus transactions processed. This is in just one year between June of last year to August of this year, uh, almost, almost close to a million smart contracts deployed and, and a lot of usage that we have seen in terms of developers, transactions, wallets, and assets that are locked in it. So one of the significant achievements of Polygon Labs has been also to bring a lot of mainstream adoption to it. You know, we kind of, sometimes Web3 lives in a bubble. The intention was us, for us to go back and bring all the mainstream adoption happen. So it could be the brands like Nike and Adidas and Prada and Starbucks. You might have heard all of them deploying the projects on Polygon. Even Yakuba is deployed on Polygon. Uh, uh, and we have a lot of these NFT projects and, and enterprises and projects that have been deploying on Polygon. So across the stack, it's not just in one sector. Talk about NFTs, talk about gaming, talk about consumer entertainment, fintech. I think because by nature, blockchain is not domain specific, you will be able to deploy any domain application on, on blockchain POS. So what we're doing with our, our new zero knowledge technology is upgrading the side chain to become a proper layer two. So what will happen is there is be something called as a ZK Validium upgrade which will make the proof of stake chain, you know, compatible with the proper layer two, which is running zero knowledge. I, I don't know if you can see the small table there, but what a validium basically means is it's a zero knowledge roll up, the same as what I told you, but instead of posting both the proof and data to back to Ethereum, it just posts the proof. The data remains off chain. Naturally, anything you post information to Ethereum is costly. So validium is a cheaper way to do it because the data is stored off chain. It's not posted to Ethereum, only the proof is posted. So that's a small difference between a validium and a ZK rollup. So POS will be upgraded to a ZK uh, uh, validium and uh, that will enable this to become a proper L2. And then we also have a Polygon ZK EVM. Uh, as I told you, I think the basics of zero knowledge, it is basically ability to prove that, you know, your statement is true without revealing the entire transaction. So this was applied to blockchain and this is probably the best way to scale Ethereum today. And uh, Polygon Labs worked and acquired a lot of companies who are building in ZK space. Um, I think they're from Europe, if I'm not wrong, uh, uh, from, from Barcelona or, or Switzerland. Uh, the Hermes team, 
uh, Jordi Bailina and others who lead the team, they are considered like the god of ZK, uh, people who saved actually Ethereum from the DAO hack and the, those white hackers. So they are extremely, extremely talented zero knowledge researchers in the space. And they built this project called Hermes, which Polygon Labs acquired. And we launched something called as Polygon ZKVM. So the mainnet went live in 27th March. It's a historic moment, not just for Polygon, but also for the entire blockchain or Ethereum family, because this is one of the first type two ZK AVMs that exist on you know, Ethereum today. We are months ahead of anybody else who are trying to build. We're very supportive. It's an open source code. In blockchain, we don't look at anybody as competition. Anybody can take the code, fork it, enhance it, contribute to the open source project. So Polygon ZKVM was launched by Vitalik himself. In fact, the first transaction he did on ZKVM said something like millions of constraints for man and unconstrained scalability for mankind. So this is a very, very profound statement that Vitalik made to be able to launch the ZKVM mainnet in itself. So this was, that's Jordi in the center and the team there, uh, you know, a bunch of crazy, crazy mathematicians, Europeans who made uh, the ZKVM uh, vision live. So the, this chain also has seen tremendous progress. Of course, it's a new chain, which means the liquidity and users are growing up, but we have seen tremendous progress so far in ZKVM as well. So we have Polygon POS, which is extremely fast, secure a side chain, which is getting upgraded. We have ZKVM, but then, you know, our founders thought, let's not stop here because, you know, I told you about the problem here. We are going to probably build a successful business and, 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 and a great technology, but we will not do enough for the, solving this problem of fragmentation. So that's when we went back to drawing board and said, what can we do to solve this fragmentation problem where everybody is trying to launch a layer two, but then you cannot interoperably move assets between these different layer twos. So that's what Polygon 2.0 is. It is truly a vision for, you know, creating the value layer of the internet itself. We talk about web three as the evolution of internet from being you know, just uh, web one being static, web two being dynamic, and web three being something which is decentralized using blockchain. If we have to truly, you know, bring that to life, we need to ensure value is exchanged across these different chains interoperably fast without any friction. So that's what Polygon 2.0 is all about. Uh, maybe a quick video to show you what 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 uh, Polygon 2.0 is all about. So yeah, as I told you, it's it's all fractured liquidity today. Each chain operates in an island, very isolated, as of their own their, their own system. Uh, but what if what if we could tie all of them together using this you know seamless seamless bridge? So that's why we call it unlimited scalability and unified liquidity because. What Polygon 2.0 enables is, uh, uh, you know, a very unique architecture which enables anybody to launch their own layer two, which means you are an application, you want to launch a layer two on Ethereum. You don't need to go acquire a Hermes team, spend a billion dollars to acquire, spend five years. You can use the open source technology of Polygon, launch your own layer two on Ethereum. So that's, that's the architecture we're talking about from governance to tokenomics. It takes care of all of it. So as I told you, the intention of Polygon 2.0 is not to build one or two chains and let others just keep building their own isolated chains. What if we can bring all of them together as a network of chains, which is all controlled by a single interop layer, which ensures that you, it bridges all the different transactions from all chains and then submits one proof to Ethereum. So you can still have a different chain, like Polygon ZKVM I showed you is a chain. Polygon POS is a separate chain. Yakuba wants to launch a brand loyalty chain. You want to not just be an application, but you want to be a blockchain itself because you know, you don't want to be a part of public. You want to be a chain yourself. You want to extend the Ethereum block space and be a chain yourself. You can just extend, open, fork the open source code, launch a chain and call it, you know, the chain one, which is the Yakuba chain. But then you share the liquidity with everyone. It is very important to understand the most important part of Polygon 2.0 is this unified liquidity. Because what happens when you start a new chain? You need to bootstrap the users. You need to bootstrap the liquidity. And hence, people tend to do this unsustainable growth hacks like airdrops and airdrop farming and all of that, which is absolutely bogus and not the right way to, you know, you know, to scale a product. So the focus shifts away from actual user experience and delivering a good product. So with this, imagine hundreds of chains are all part of this one polygon interop layer. You can share the liquidity with each other. So the Yakuba, when they launch the new chain, they can actually leverage billions of dollars of liquidity, which are all parked in other chains. And then you can just seamlessly move that. 
it is not going to take you across chain bridge which is less secure or friction to be able to do that it's all as if you are moving transactions within one chain so you get the benefit of being an independent chain but then you are able to unify all the liquidity so that's in simple simple words what polygon 2.0 is all about i'll probably not get into the details of it but happy to talk about it offline in terms of architecture it's 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 complex it's not fully solved yet we are in the process of solving it partly we have released some versions of it and early next year when all of this will come to life so you have ethereum you have a staking layer where everybody can stake the pool asset to be a part of the system you have a shared bridge you have a client you have the chains like zkvm myden or anybody and then you have plonky which is probably it's 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 a great innovation again in the cryptographic space plonky 3 is the world's fastest zero knowledge prover that exists on earth today like it's by far the fastest in terms of proving a transaction using zero knowledge technology and that is what is deployed across all the chains so yes yeah, staking layer allows validators and everybody to be able to stake and deserve, you know get rewarded from the entire ecosystem so you can take different roles you know you can uh, stake different tokens and you can you know get rewarded in different ways there are it's again this itself is a half an hour topic in itself but this is one of the prominent parts of polygon 2.0 because you have multiple chains with different configurations you can actually take any role in this part of the staking hub and then be able to get rewarded from it uh, the most important part as i told you is the ag layer or the interop layer because this is truly the one that batches or merges all the different proof proofs from different chains and then submits as one chain to ethereum so individual chains they do the transactions it's all proved using the interop layer on ethereum which means you derive the security from ethereum but you don't need to depend on ethereum for scalability uh plonky 3 as i told you is 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 a prover that is the technology that actually proves the transaction and generates the zero knowledge proofs that is what ethereum requires to be able to prove that it's a valid transaction or not uh, so we had to upgrade the token as well so matic was the token for pos matic truly you know 2018 I, if you ask the founders any of it they wouldn't they would laugh at it it was matic was supposed to be a token for just one chain proof of stake chain uh, but matic is i mean the polygon network has evolved much much beyond that so we had to design a new token called pol so pol is that hyper productive token which will ensure uh, you know there is value across this entire system of interconnected web of l2s that we are building so this this it's not a completely new token so the utility of pol like matic was just a transaction fee or gas token on polygon pol is is going to be used in multiple ways uh you know you know i i tell it in 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 simple words that if bitcoin bitcoin is an unproductive asset right you can just hold it trade with it do nothing with it ether is a productive asset you can participate in the network you can stake it get rewarded you can you can participate in the consensus vote for certain things so it's a productive asset pol is a hyper productive asset what do i mean by that is you can participate in across all the chains imagine the network effects hundreds and hundreds of chains keep joining all of them will start staking pool which means you keep deriving rewards for it exponentially as well so the token is designed to ensure that the network is self sustainable and it takes care of all the you know rewards and mechanisms of that as well uh the packet to pool migration i mean if you are one of the token holders you don't need to worry about it uh we have 4 years till you can swap so it's not a new token that's going to be traded separately it's the same it's one of one is to one swap so you hold matic you can just swap it to pool and it will be live next year in exchanges uh um, so i think this is basically what polygon 2.0 is it is it is enabling then polygon cdk is that open source component that enables anybody to deploy their layer to chain on ethereum so cdk stands for chain development kit open source anybody can use polygon cdk to deploy their layer to on ethereum seamless fast instantly and you can get the unified liquidity from from all other chains as well um this is polygon cdk and today where we are today we have an lxly bridge that connects all the different layer 2s and then enables interoperable transactions and it takes around yeah 30 minutes of 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 trust to generate the proof posted back to ethereum but with all the technology that i told you we're working upon uh, we're creating you know like an ethereum level of composability with with the new prover tech and, and the ag layer that i spoke about which will ensure that near instant within a minute you will be able to prove the transactions on ethereum so you have a separate layer to chain you move assets there or transact something it's within a minute proved on ethereum that it's all fine so it's as good as doing on ethereum but you get the advantage of scale as well so what you, what can you do with cdk you can launch your own uh, layer 2 on ethereum or if you are a layer 1 today 
but struggling with different challenges, you can actually become a proper zero knowledge enabled layer two on Ethereum by just migrating to a Polygon CDK based chain. So how does this stack and compare? Uh, there are a couple of other ecosystems who are trying to do something similar, uh, which is trying to enable you to create a chain. Uh, I mean, the difference is, is for you to see, but one of the main things is the withdrawal period. You know, everybody has finality, which is not instant because we use zero knowledge technology, the finality is instant. And then there are a lot of other benefits, like it's an open source license and all of that that comes with it. So there are a lot of projects that have already announced or launched their layer twos. Immutable, the largest gaming blockchain is now a CDK based chain on Polygon. Right? Imagine IMX Immutable was a separate chain in itself. You had to deploy your game there and you will not be able to interoperable, make it interoperable with other chains in a secure manner. But now, because it's a part of the L2 family of chains of Polygon, it's very easy to do it. Palm Network, CapEx, ASTAR is one of the largest blockchains in Japan. They also committed to join. Nexon is one of the largest in South Korea. So yeah, there are a lot of people who are now trying to launch layer twos on Ethereum because it's free, it's open source, it's easy, and then you know you get all the benefits as well. OKX was one of the largest thing. OKX is one of the biggest exchanges in the world. Uh, so imagine now OKX has launched X1. It is their own chain, but it is an L2 on the Polygon CDK, which means now say Yakuba launches their new chain, they have almost close to $25 billion of liquidity just with OKX, which they can leverage if they want to in terms of you know moving the assets. When I say Yakuba, the users who are joining the Yakuba chain will be able to leverage that and be able to easily move. So, I mean, OKX chose Polygon, you know, sometimes you need to give grants and you need to give money to people to come, but very proud to say that OKX was, you know, naturally choosing Polygon. No BD done, no money given to them. They naturally chose Polygon CDK because of the technology and our ability to actually, you know, show instant finality. Uh, so that's that's what Polygon is all about. We're trying to solve for Ethereum scaling in the most fast, efficient, and scalable manner. It's truly a tribute to all the developers who are who are building on Polygon or in Web3 itself, so they can launch their own chains. So in summary, this is what Polygon is about. We have a proof of stake chain, which is extremely fast, highly scalable. Uh, almost almost as secure as Ethereum. It doesn't, it, it is Validium if you remember, which means the data is not posted. So it's a little less secure than ZKVM. Polygon ZKVM, a true L2 on Ethereum, highly secure, a little less scalable because it takes some time to process the data also on Ethereum, but definitely multiples faster than Ethereum directly. And then you have Polygon CDK, an open source module which you can use to launch your own chains as well. So that's, that's what Polygon is. Uh, I represent the dev team that I told you, maybe in the, quickly in the next couple of minutes, I'll tell you what all we're doing to evangelize for this. So we don't just, uh, at Polygon Labs, we develop the protocol and the technology, but we also support the builders to be able to do that. We have 100 plus guilds. These are local developer chapters across the world. Uh, volunteer groups who are evangelizing Polygon across the world. We even have one in Lisbon as well. Uh, we had a builder house there as well. We have advocates who evangelize the Polygon tech. These are all tech guys who want to talk about Polygon tech and they get you know uh, incentives for it. We had a global tour which we did where we traveled across the world and spoke about it. So if you want to join a guild or you want to, you know, you could want to join a guild or you want to start a guild in Madeira, you can actually do that. It's a Polygon. It's, you can just go to polygon.technology slash guild, submit a form and you can actually start a guild and we'll be supporting you with any resources, funding that you need to be able to evangelize the Polygon tech here. Advocates, if this is for people who love the tech, you want to understand more about the tech, get early access to our roadmaps and then talk about it, you can apply to this. If you are a Polygon advocate, you get access to all of this and then you also get to travel to events and talk about Polygon. Uh, we have a developer discord. This is one of the most vibrant online communities we have. Uh, highly moderated. So yeah, if you're not a true developer, you may not be getting access to it. But if you are a developer, you want to know more about the tech, do join it and a lot of quality conversations there. Uh, the global tour that we did, I personally toured at least yeah, six countries this year to be able to meet a lot of people. Very, very humbling to meet people who are uh, trying to do so much in the space. And yeah, I think I'm here as, as, as part of, uh, uh, you, know, and, you know, increasing and, and, and enhancing that experience as well. So we did a lot of hackathons, connect. I told you we had a builder house in Lisbon, which we recently concluded. We housed 10 top startups in Lisbon who went through mentorship sessions and co-working space to be able to enhance their product. We launched Village as a program as well, which is if you are a project building on Polygon, you can get grants. 
you can get a uh, mentorship you can get access to incubators and accelerators you can get discount vouchers from the solution providers in our ecosystem so a lot of this is available you can go to polygon.technology/village and you can apply if you are a project there uh, we have a solution provider network so if you are a dapp developer you want to know what all infrastructure exists there is again a network called ecosystem.polygon.technology/spn where you can find what are the wallets supporting polygon what are the oracles databases all of that supporting polygon so you can build easily on top of it uh, we have a support portal anything this is like a genie anything that you need from polygon you can go to support.polygon.technology and ask for it we are launching you know our intention is to make people enable lot lot about the technology uh, i spoke about zero knowledge plonky 3 and all of that but i'm sure i have done remotely any justice to actually teaching you about what the technology is. so polygon learn will be a community curated curated platform where you can learn more about blockchain there will be courses tutorials videos workshops we'll be launching this early next year uh, ecosystem explorer which will showcase all our ecosystem as well and uh, you know we're launching a new way for you to be able to bridge the assets between these different layer to chains and swap them so that's polygon portal that will be launched soon as well so yeah i think uh, uh, this is one of the photos from the lisbon guild event that we did uh, so we keep traveling happy to meet any builders or anybody here if looking for any support from polygon happy to do that and you can connect with me online as well on twitter or linkedin and i'll be around today and tomorrow thank you so much madira again for having me here and hope you all have great fun and happy building on polygon thank you wait 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 don't go away there's a couple of water for you if you want to sip. <laughs> Thank you. But now, after all the keynote speakers, we have the time for some questions. Oh. So the audience has the opportunity. Yeah, you still have to work a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm just mindful of time. I know I exceeded. So no, I, know. I, know, I can fine. take it's questions fine. or I can take offline if you know, it's the longest one. Schedule. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> you were surprised by Cristiano Ronaldo. That's why you <laughs> felt so enthusiastic. So the, so the audience now can actually make any questions or any comments that you might have. There were a lot of uh, content that he developed. It's Anyone? Okay, yeah. just a second. There's a microphone. Sometimes it's difficult to look up to see, though. There's a microphone. It's, it's here. You can. And then there's another one. Okay. Uh, hi. So, so far, two questions. So this might be a bit of a dumb question because there's a lot of uh, things that I don't really understand uh, in, in the, the whole layer two and uh, the ZK rollups. But when it comes to Ethereum, it's the here. <laughs> it's difficult uh, for us to <laughs> see the, the yeah. audience with those lights. Well. So. When it comes to Ethereum, there is this upcoming uh, sharding of the, the network, right? Yep, and yep. it mo promises more scalability, less gas fees and whatnot. And the question that I had is, how will this affect Polygon and affect the layer two with the ZK uh, rollups and all of that? How, how will it improve uh, or what basically no that's a very fantastic question i'm glad that you are uh, at least i have some confidence somebody at least understood part of what i told so what he's talking about is there is a, something called sharding which ethereum is doing it's a part of ethereum's roadmap where you will actually be able so ethereum naturally is also looking to scale itself the sharding is one of the ways in which i think it will be you will be i think 64 times be able to enhance the scalability of transactions you can process on ethereum so the short answer to what you told is uh, it is a good news for us because ultimately, whether we submit the, you know, whether you do the entire transactions on Ethereum or you submit the proof on Ethereum, you still have to use Ethereum. So for us, I think at Polygon, it's a good news because our ability to submit the proof is faster now. The cost of submitting a proof is cheaper, which means it further reduces the cost of transaction. Sharding alone is nowhere closer to achieving scalability of transactions per second, which can sustain the load that Ethereum today has forget about in future it's continuing to grow so it's pretty clear i think that even when sharding comes to life it is not going to scale ethereum enough because what is the transactions per second i think today it's 10 12 transactions per second is what ethereum can process whereas layer twos can do thousands 10000 plus transactions per second so it's impossible for sharding to meet that and it's anyways going to take some time so sharding is anyways good news because it further reduces the cost of submitting a proof on layer twos Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have other questions down down here. Yeah, great question. Uh, 
presentation, well, Ajay. Yeah. Great presentation, Ajay. Um, I had a question. It seems like Polygon is now trying to become a chain of chains of sort. Yeah. And there's another chain that has done that as well, Cosmos. So is Polygon trying to do what Cosmos has already done and how is it better than that? No, I think again, again, a fantastic question. I think uh, a, a lot of, lot of respect to Cosmos ecosystem. Cosmos is uh, again, I think, uh, so I think it's not fully Ethereum aligned. So I think we are fully Ethereum aligned, uh, but we are definitely inspired by a lot of architectures that they've done because Cosmos architecture is kind of similar to it. Uh, yeah, I think it, with the Terra Luna collapse and all of it, I think the ecosystem is not, Cosmos ecosystem unfortunately is not as vibrant as what it was before. So yeah, that's one of the main things. And second, with our advancements in Plonky 3 and zero knowledge and all of that, it keeps us completely in a different kind of architecture. While although the broad scheme of things is the same, which is you're able to now create a stack which anybody can use to deploy a chain, which is all unified with the liquidity. I think the broad concept is the same, but the way in which we do it is pretty different. And we believe that this is more secure to be able to do. And we still want to be fully Ethereum aligned. And that's one of the diff more stark differences. Of course, I don't want to talk bad about it, but the ecosystem is in itself, I think, in a verge of, I wouldn't say collapse, but it's not, not, not how it was, at, especially after the Terra Luna thing happened. Wait, 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 wait. We need a sound again. So we don't need any cross-chain bridges? After? No, no, you don't. That's the that's the biggest. So today, if you have to move asset from one chain to another, you need these cross-chain bridges, which is one of the most vulnerable in terms of hacks and friction, you know, wormhole and all of that. You have, we've seen that. So with this, it's seamless. It's it's just no cross-chain bridge required. It's as, as good as moving transaction between one wallet to another wallet in the same chain. So that's what the ag layer and the LXLY bridge will enable to do. Okay, perfect. We had one over there, right? You still want? No, okay. Look um, up. Hi. 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 Thank you for the um, uh, talk. I have a question in regards of plants and you spoke about finality and uh, I'm curious, I don't know if it's an outdated question or not. Um, to what extent does Polygon still use Tendermint and to what extent is the consensus algorithm that Polygon is developing? Is there any plans to move away from Tendermint or is there any plans to develop their own consensus algorithm or anything in that similar direction? In, in discussion, I don't think I'll be able to confirm that right now today, but uh, I think, I think uh, we don't want to in, in, in essence in long term. Be so we're just going to be using Cosmos technology for, for now? No, it's not Cosmos technology that we're using. The consensus mechanism also is, I think, so. It is my friend. So, yeah, so I think you can, I think there is a blog published called The Three Pillars of Governance. So you can read that and that talks more about how we do the consensus and how we will, there is all, all things about the emission and everything mentioned as well. So it's a very different mechanism. So yeah, thanks. Today it's a little, yeah, I don't think I have visibility to comment on that. Okay, I think we're done for now. A big applause again for AJ. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take Thank my you. souvenir. <laughs> my, my most memorable one. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much.